Funny enough, he said the best bait to use for a black bear because they're very curious animals and they like <laughs> they like bad smells. But uh, he said dog food, and if you take a propane bottle. And actually, if you can get it to open up and spray a little bit, you know that, you know, when propane starts running out, you get that fume that just that smell from it. Yeah. If you can kind of douse your dog food in that, you'll get a bear every single time. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. We can wander our way over, you know, because this is wandering ways. What's Bigfoot possibility? Clink, clink. Oh, I like the bee mug this week. Ah, Thank you. you know, save the bees but for one. But the other one is, this was given to me as a gift. So I've been, uh, just recently got it. I've been riding it well. Jeez. Oh, jeez. Mr. Michael Gray is calling me. That's my pops, everybody. No. <laughs> awkward <laughs> timing. Awkward timing. Right? No. You got to wait, Dad. <laughs> Podcast. I know you're not listening. <laughs> Thanks for your love and support. <laughs> How you doing, man? It's been, uh, what, a week? I think so. He's come <laughs> out on Wednesdays, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's great. I'm excited for today. You know, you read the title. You see, we got Colt. We're going to talk Zion. I was actually, just yesterday, you know, the day before we're recording this, I was out on the ice with Colton, and we, were, and we set up my ice hut. Uh, I went out and bought one because I was like, you know, I'm tired of just sitting around home in the winter. So let's get outside. Let's go ice fishing. You know, let's sit around on the ice. Yeah, I saw that you did that. I mean, it looked like classic ice fishing. Every Anything I've ever seen involving ice fishing, where it's just people in some sort of enclosure with warm winter clothing on sitting around a hole in the ice and uh typically there's a beverage consumed yeah and exactly we were hanging out having a good time uh just love it living life love it. it was really windy and we it was we set the fucker up didn't stake it down and me and colton are hanging on to it sliding <laughs> across the ice like it was a flag or like a okay it was great man um he uh the other thing too is we did a video together if you if you watch the rougarou my instagram uh, uh <laughs> where he's setting up the ice fishing hole and uh i'm in the tent and it's the video that goes like hey what's your name and the guy goes ezekiel oh fuck you ezekiel oh what's your name toby fuck you toby <laughs> you know <laughs> it's on there if you want to see it it's pretty funny <laughs> You'll have to check it out, the Rougarou. Make sure to check out the Rougarou. Um, what have you been up to? Uh, um, finally had actually like a day off. Actually, I had more than a day off. I had like wow. technically like two and a half days off, which is like the most I think I'll get in a while. So I made the most of it. I was oh, well. out. By making the most of it, I was going for massive amounts of trail running. So I was just running on some of the trails here in Ashland and then playing a lot of sand volleyball. Yeah, I know you like your, your volleyball. You're, uh, you're good. Uh, you like that shit. I play with uh, some very Ashland-esque people. The same kind of that? people that would fit in with Humboldt. Oh, makes sense. It does. You're yeah. a weird dude, so. Yeah, I sense. attract crazy. It's just part of the gig. Yeah, well. It's, it's just part of it. but no we're talking zion today with um your cousin yeah we've been on a few adventures with this pal you know we did uh we well you i guess you didn't really get to spend a lot of time with him uh in the car but when we did yellowstone uh in 2020 um yeah. colton sat shoddy with me and uh yolo abdul and obj you know we got we were rolling in the Rougarou through the park, you were in your car. Uh, Colton was with us. It was a good time. He's a he's been some places. He actually he does a lot of hiking, um, a lot of solo stuff, which um, is dangerous. And we kind of actually talk about his safety preparedness at the end there, which is good to know, uh, especially when going to places. Because even though we do talk Zion, we talk about how many people there are, you can still find yourself in those sticky situations. 
Yeah, no, you totally can. Um, and we get into all of that with uh, Colton. Um, before we do jump into the interview with old Colton, uh, please make sure you go out, you hit that like, subscribe, the rating, give us a review, do all of those things for the podcast, whether it's on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, um, Anchor, wherever you listen to your podcast, give us that old uh, like a roo. Uh, rating too. Spotify does ratings um, now, so make sure you go on to Spotify and make that rating. It will help us out big time. Um, but yeah, yeah, so we talk all things Zion on this one. Yeah, no, please give us the rating. We need them. Uh, we appreciate them. We love them. We'll even shout you out. So yeah, if we get a good one, we'll give you a shout out. Um, anyways, let's just jump into the interview with old Colton. All right, here we go. All right, now we got our good friend, Mr. Colton Gray, on to talk about all things Zion today. Um, pretty excited about this one because you've done Zion in a different than I would say most, or at least I have, and I've been to Zion twice, whereas you stayed the whole week. And I think the most I was in Zion was cumulatively three days. Right. Yeah, I think for me, I think I was there uh, nine, you know, or, or a day and a half, maybe. Not even. We got in at night. We left kind of midday. Yeah, right. when, when we did Angel's Landing and the, the time with Vince, we got in, spent, I think, a whole day there. So it comes up to two, three. But anyways, um, when you did that, one, what year was it? And two, where did you stay down there? Um, let's see. I think it was, must have been four years ago, 2018, I believe it was. And it was in March, actually. So kind of the prime time, but we, uh, <laughs> so we kind of screwed up the first night. We drove all the way through Zion because of, well, let's see. So we drove down there, stopped in Salt Lake, saw my little brother. And then the next morning, got up, geared up and everything like that, went down to Zion and we went through Springdale. And then, uh, we drove all the way through the park because we just wanted to see it. You know, it's kind of like, I don't know, we just got to. And then uh, so we drove all the way through the park thinking we would be able to find a campground around there because I honestly didn't do much research before we got down there. And then uh, got through. We're like, shit, there's nowhere to camp. You know, all the spots are full and, you know, there's not too many campgrounds anyway. So we got to the other, let's see, it would have been, yeah, the east side of Zion, right outside of it. There's a campground that you have to spend, uh, it was 40 bucks a night, I believe. And you had to buy firewood from them and all that stuff. And we're like, you know what? No, that's too much. I didn't, yeah. that's not in my budget. So ironically, when we showed up, <laughs> we actually, when we're in the line, like outside of Springdale waiting to get in the park, one of my buddies from college was actually in the car uh, ahead of us. So yeah, that kind of, we were talking to them left and right and all that stuff. And they texted me and they said, hey, you know, we have a campground outside of, let's see, it'd be on the west side of the park. And it's all just public, public land out there in Utah, I guess. And you can just camp right off the side of the road. No fee, no nothing like that. So we're like, heck yeah, we're hightailing it over there. Went over there, put up a tent, and there you go. So Yeah, free. I'd actually had heard that about Zion is there's like BLM land kind of on top of the canyon itself where you can mm -hmm. like camp and basically overlook uh the um canyon there and it and since it's blm land you can do it all for free yeah no exactly that that's what we were after you know just because i mean the 40 bucks a night that that can be extensive when you're staying for the whole week you know so we're like yeah let's let's just go to the other side and uh we met up with my buddy so that was pretty fun you know kind of hanging out and there's a ton of people down there anyway for you know it's a big like mountain biking area and people bring their dirt bikes and four-wheelers all that stuff big off-roading area so um yeah i the camping part was fun the only issue was getting in and out of the park because there's always that line right at wow. the um uh, you know the entrance yeah so that kind of sucked but if you got up early enough, like there's one morning we got up at five o'clock and went on through and it was, I mean, there was no one up at that point yet. So that was nice, but we couldn't see anything. So that sucked. <laughs> Did you so, take the, the um, tram or the shuttles up to the, through the park? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause there's, isn't, there's that one section where it's just 
Hi, sweetie. There's, there's just that one, um, there's that section that kind of goes up north into the park that you can only take the bus. Um, so we took that and just basically stopped at every stop and hiked where we could. What did you, you by chance get up and go up to the, uh, the north unit by any chance? You know how like Zion has that other yep. unit? So you we did. drove through it actually. We drove through it and that we didn't really go hiking around and everything like that. But we just drove through it and it's it's beautiful up there. It's a lot different though. It's uh you're on top of the canyon instead of the bottom of the canyon, you know. Yeah. So that's what I've seen. Well, because there's a ways like you could see Angels Landing and those other ones from the top. Mm -hmm. Um and definitely like I think up there there's even some BLM land you can camp on. Um and you get I believe so. Yeah. We we didn't spend too much time up there. That was kind of Let's see. I think that was when we were going back to Salt Lake because we were going to stay with my brother again after the whole trip had been over, you know. So we're yeah. like, well, let's take the scenic route because we got nothing, you know, nothing better to do. So you kind of go up north, go through the park again. And there's like no entrances up there or anything like that. It's just all of a sudden you're in the national park. Oh, because cool. there's, there's not much to it. I mean, it's just kind of a quick little road, you know. Um, it's more just like public land in a sense. pretty much yeah. yeah it's just kind of like a scenic byway almost so we from took my that. understanding that's where a lot of the back country for zion is is up on top of the canyon yep so i think what a lot of people do is start up there and then walk down into the you know the canyon area the main area so yeah. i don't know I haven't talked to all those people, but I'm sure it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure it is real beautiful. Because, I mean, anytime you get above the canyon, it's nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for real. Well, and like Zion, one thing I like is, you know, the, the, in that canyon, there is a lot to do. There's a lot of hikes. Uh, we were we were thankful enough to do Angel's Landing mm -hmm. uh, back when me and Mark were there. Um, when I was there by myself, we did some of those, like, scenic hikes where you walk up to the the just like the boards and that road that one road that takes you to angel's landing you can actually take it uh well we took it in the off season because this was like early early march mm -hmm. um but i i'm curious what hikes uh you you said you did a lot of hikes i know mark has done the narrows and i mean you both can speak to that kind of what you guys have done there um but yeah let's hear what you guys did yeah so I was actually unfortunate. I never got to do the narrows because when I was down there, it was flooding. So uh -huh. that was a bummer. Um, that was honestly <laughs> the one thing that I really wanted to do, but just kind of, you know, luck didn't plan out. So that sucked. But we did, let's see. So Angel's Landing, we did that twice, and I'll get into that a little bit later. But uh, did Angel's Landing twice. We did that Weeping Rock. And there's, you can go. When you take the weeping rock one, you can actually, you go straight up and then you hook off to the left and that'll take you to the rock. And that's, that's pretty, you know, but then um, when you come back to that little junction, you can take off to the right and it takes you into this like little canyon thing. So you feel like you're a, a canyoneer, so to speak, you know what I mean? Cause you're kind of snaking through this stuff and grabbing onto chains and, you know, holding yourself on the side of the mountain basically. So that was really cool. Um, the emerald pools, those are pretty cool. Though I've heard that's dependent on the time of year because when they get low, it's just kind of a mud pit. But, uh, you know, when they're filled up and everything, it's real nice, shiny water. It, it looks clean. I don't know if it is or not, but, you know, it's that was pretty cool. Um, and then there's, you know, there's just that one that basically the river walks or whatever. You can just walk along the river, which is those are nice. I don't consider them hikes. They're just more walking trails for, you know, kind of like disabled folks or something like that, you know, which is cool yeah. but when we did angels landing so the first night we got down there we looked out and the one of the forest rangers we walked right into the you know the little uh what am i trying to say like the information center or whatever we're like hey we're gonna go look for a backpacking permit because we thought they were accessible to anyone and uh the guy in there he's like yeah no yeah most people buy these like a year in advance and we're like oh sorry <laughs> we didn't realize that you know and uh turns out he was actually from big timber so i was like well i'm from columbus dude you know and just kind of got talking and everything like that so he's like well you know what 
I don't think one person's coming. So he actually gave us a permit so we could walk past uh, Angel's Landing and it's on the West Rim Trail. And you can oh, walk yeah. all the way back. I mean, it goes around the whole park, but we just stopped. It was probably about 10 miles back in and that's where we set up camp and everything. And it was right. There's one campground back there. Um, that's the first one that you hit. And uh, we just camped basically right on the edge of the canyon almost. And it's, it's just, it's gorgeous, man. It was beautiful. That's where we saw a lot more wildlife up there than we did in like the busy areas, you know. What, what kind of wildlife? Well, you see the, the desert bighorns, the mule deer, obviously, and then a bunch of like ground squirrels or um, whatever, the, the rock squirrels, all that stuff, you know. There wasn't a lot of wildlife, which I was not bummed about, but I, I thought we would have seen more, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I know there's that bison herd up on top uh, outside of the park. I mean, it's a public or it's a private ranch, but. Well, um, yeah. They got yeah, no, that's that's about all we saw was those big horns and the mule deer about it. And then the mule deer, you know, that's it's in the desert. They don't look too great. And stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they look shaggy. Kind of shabby, but no, it's it's, legit. You're able to like camp on top there. Yeah, no, we really lucked out. That guy from Big Tim, he did us a solid, actually. So, um, and funny story, <laughs> uh, the gal I went with at that time, she, uh, well, she ate a lot of pistachios the night before, you know, the night we were camping. She ate a ton of them, and it kind of messed with her belly. So she was she was down for the count. We woke up about 6.30 or so, and uh, we're like, well, let's start packing up. And she was down for the count for about three hours. Ooh. And yeah, so she wasn't feeling too hot, so I had to pack up the whole thing myself and everything. And that, that I wasn't too happy at that, but we got out of there. I'm no, scared. one of my favorite one of those is we're we're up in Glacier Park. Me and Mark are camped, mm -hmm. and, and this is the first time we like doing like an actual camping. Mark's going to go to the back country office to go get permits, and we, like the plan was for both of us to go and just go. Mm. I'm tired as hell and I just toss him the keys to my car and I just stay in the tent and sleep for like another hour as he goes off and gets our permits <laughs> yeah lazy Sometimes bastard you gotta do that. <laughs> yeah no. yeah it, I guess um when you did Angel's Landing was was it crowded so so when I actually did Angel's Landing we did so we went up the West Rim Trail, right, which is what goes behind Angel's Landing. Yeah. Um, came back down, there was a huge line because that's I wanted to do that as well. And uh, there was a huge line. So we're like, you know what, we'll do this at a later point. And then I think it was the next day I came back. It was about, I don't know, it was right when the la I caught the last bus going home. Let's put it that way. So I went kind of toward the end of the day and everything. And there was absolutely no one. There was actually a guy doing the doing the hike in barefoot. And I was just in awe about that. I was like, man, you are some kind of crazy <laughs> because my feet hurt and I got shoes on right now. <laughs> you got but, sticky feet. Oh, well, I guess so, man. But that was, that was actually, we were a little scared to do that at the beginning because they, I think it was like two weeks before or something like that. Someone had actually fallen off the edge of Angel's Landing. So, you know, and it, it happens every year. And that's something that, you know, a lot of people, they don't advertise that part. No. And it, it, it's very steep on both sides. And that's something that, you know, folks just have to be careful about. And I guess the, the unfortunate people who fell before we got there was, it was a, a father chasing after his daughter. Oh, so, yeah. So that was like very, you know, we were curious, like, should we even do that? It just doesn't, you know, it kind of doesn't sit right and everything. And then, uh, the gal I was with, she actually, she didn't come with me because of that. And when I got up there, I was like, okay, I can, yeah, I can see that. This is just not a, not a very friendly hike, you know? And people are just, that whole line, people are pushing each other and all this stuff. And it's like, dude, you got to wait your turn. You really do. Cause it's not, <laughs> this is unforgiving, man. You fall and you can't catch nothing. People it's, are vicious. They're rude. They are. And it, that was just kind of, I don't know, man. It's just like, we're all here for the same reason. We all want to see it. You know, just, just wait your turn. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah. 
No, but that's exactly how I thought. And that's why when they put the permit system in this year, I was so like thankful because they needed to do something like that. Did they do that? Yeah, I see. Yeah, that's, this year is the first year. That's, I think that's a good idea for them because like I said, there's just too many people and it's too tight of a trail. Yeah. And people are, people are trying to pass other people and stuff. And it's like, dude, no, this is a single file. You got to start marching, man. <laughs> Yeah, but, and some people aren't wearing like good shoes and stuff on it. And you're or, like, or any shoes at all. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Uh, well, there's but, two specific instances when we were doing it where Mark, there was this guy, he had a baby on his back, like in like car seat kind of carrier thing. Oh yeah, and he was just passing people like nuts, like rudely, yeah. like I'm gonna jump four people, and he was doing that and then this lady who was hanging onto the rope because she was too terrified to go yeah and she people was, were just yeah. passing her and pushing her and oh yeah that's that's a lot of what i saw too um and i think it's because i went later in the day and most people had you know the idea that i had like there'd be less people right so i think that's when the slower folks want to go oh. but at the same time that's when the faster people want to go too and they're just sitting there trying to cruise around and all that. And it's like, they're trying to hold on to that rope or the chain, whatever's there. You got to let them do that. You can't, you can't pressure people. Cause like I said, man, obviously there are fatalities up there, you know, and we don't, you don't want to be the cause of that. No. So I don't know, but aside from all that stuff, once you do get up to the top and the, 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 the point of that whole deal, you know, it just, it's breathtaking breathtaking and I, I got up there at sunset so that was just absolutely beautiful i mean i sat there for a good long while and just took it all in how was the hike down then if was it dark uh it was getting dark at that point yeah um i had a uh, flashlight i had a headlight on me so if you're gonna be hiking in the dark i recommend that you bring one of those because those if you're doing the... angels landing <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's what I got off of that. Uh, what do you want to call that? That ridge, I guess. Um, I got off of that before dark, and then when I was oh. actually on the, you know, the 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 maintained trail. Yeah, the Walter Wiggles and all that. Yeah, that's what it is. The Walter's Wiggles. Yeah, that's even pretty treacherous too. That can, that's steep, man. That's a lot steeper than it looks. That's a feat for a lot of people, honestly. It is. Yeah, that's what I know. I know people that. Actually, my, my girlfriend now, she's gone up there and she's like, yeah, that gives me like vertigo when I look at that stuff, you know, and then you, when you're walking up it, it just kind of messes with your brain or I don't know, I don't have vertigo, so I can't describe it, but <laughs> you know, it, it, uh, yeah, it screws with her, but luckily yeah. enough, it doesn't bother me. So, yeah. But, yeah. I'm fortunate you know, enough. Um, vertigo doesn't bother me. Yeah. Yeah, but when yeah. I went the first time I went to Zion, I was able to do the Narrows, um, mm -hmm. and honestly, it was it sounds like a similar trip to your your trip, except we only did it for a day where we didn't have any plans. We got in super early in the morning, and actually got lucky to get a campground in the park, and mm -hmm. then we just woke up early and went and did um, Narrows and then the Emerald Pools in the afternoon, but. The Narrows is really cool because you feel like you're just walking through this little slit and it's just shelf and shelf, just straight mm -hmm. up to both sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I was really bummed that we couldn't do that. I mean, I get it because it was flooding, but at the same time, you know, it kind of pissed me off just because, hey, I came 500 miles, whatever it is from Montana, just down here for this. But, you know, it... Uh, and I did see a bunch of people going. So they experienced a lot of those flash floods down there. Yeah, you know? a ton of them. Yeah. And that that's when we went was during that season, I guess. I, I didn't know that when we did go down there. Like I said, we didn't do a whole lot of research. We just kind of like, yeah, we're going to Zion, you know. And uh, when we got down there, the first day we were down there, we saw everyone just decked out, you know, with their fancy new waders and all that stuff. And we're like, oh, we thought you could just, you know take off your shoes and hike <laughs> but uh but then yeah we kind of got to talking to some people and they're like yeah you don't you don't want to do that not this time of year and it's just it's too it's too high and then the, the chance of flash floods and everything so um, i could see yeah. it there were points when i did it where 
the water got up to my waist. Um, now Is I kind of right? did it because it was at my feet or my knees a bunch of times. So I was already wet and I'd be like, I'm mm. going to take this easy shortcut and it get up to my like waist at times. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I could have done it, but yeah, it is. <laughs> well, it gives you another reason to go back. <laughs> That's right. And it is a park that you need to go more than once. I've been wanting to get back down there just having a time or anything. Cause it is like, uh like you said there's that whole north section that's just almost like you said it's it's kind of like a backpacking park that's what i'd like to do is just take a few days walk through the park you know maybe have someone park their car on the north side and then i don't know where you would park at the main area but somewhere down there i mean yeah i don't know you just see a lot of different stuff when you get off the beaten trail because there are so many people on that you know the main area even even going up to angel's landing like we were just describing i mean there's tons of people yeah and it's not it's not a huge park by any means no it's not and i mean it gets it gets really packed especially if you're just trying to get on a shuttle down from the visitor center that sometimes mm -hmm. can take you an hour just to get yep. on one of those yeah. yeah no it's crazy it's a uh, it's one of those parks but i think what i like about that park and and where it is on people's trips is like it is one of those parks that they're hitting once or twice or you know they're hitting for a couple days and then they're moving on to another park because they're going to right. Grand Canyon or they're going to Bryce or is is you can do that and around the park like you said the BLM land is there the Grand Staircase Staircase Escalante is around there um and there's there's plenty to do um <laughs> in those areas even page arizona and horseshoe bend and lake powell they're not too far right. uh, from this area and I, I like that they they have those things because the desert to me you're gonna you're gonna find really cool sticks and rocks and boulders and formations all over the desert because it's always changing the winds doing this the rains doing that uncovering unearthing things and erosion at its finest exactly the, the the flash flood the narrows brings mm -hmm. yeah it could show us something else next time you know you never know right i just yeah i think a lot of the area around zion is like highly underrated and probably way less packed because there is there is a lot of public land and so i bet you can find some real gems not far from zion and probably like mm -hmm. an eighth of the people right yeah, when we were kind of driving through there, <clears throat> you know, on the last day when we were kind of going back up to Salt Lake, like I said, we did take the scenic way. And there's, you know, people on their Harleys and stuff like that just going to, you know, for sightseeing and everything. But you see a bunch of, like, rock climbers out there, people in their, you know, big Jeeps and everything like that, or razors and all sorts of off-road vehicles, and then just people out there camping, you know. And I think it is because there's a fraction of the people that go to the parks and everything. And considering that there's what, I think there's, is it five in Utah? Yeah, the big five. Yeah, because there's the Grand Canyon, Bryce, Capitol Reef, Zion, forgetting one. Canyonlands, Arches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah. See, and I, I haven't gone to those. Next time I go down to Zion, I do want to make it a point to kind of go to, what's the closest one there? Is it Bryce? Bryce, Bryce yeah. Yeah. See, I want to I want to make it a point just to at least hit Bryce or something and see the other like you said, the formations, that's that's the crazy part about the desert and Zion is just the rock formations that you see and all the different colors and everything. And that's one yeah. thing. When you go to Angel's Landing, you see all the red, uh, all the red rocks, right? And then once you get back past there, give or take five miles, that rock changes. And all of a sudden, it's like just gray and white rocks. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is just, to me, that's absolutely astounding. You know, just the way that the world has kind of formed itself and all those features are there and we're just kind of staring at them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like we're living on that rock, essentially, that formation. That right, us, right, right, right. It's hard to comprehend <laughs> what they really are. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's like, how does this happen? You know, I took a geology class in, in college, but I didn't pay attention. And now, oh, man, I wish I would have. Yeah. <laughs> I could have told you why that rock was white and that one's red. I uh, I'm there with you every time. I'm always like, I wish I paid more attention in geology. 
I've even but gone to the ranger talks about geology and I'm like trying to absorb it, but it, they go so fast and it's only like 15 minutes. And I'm like, all right, I still don't know anything. <laughs> right. Yeah. A lot of big words. Yeah. <laughs> well, one thing too, uh, you talked about going into the ranger station beyond the, the, the ranger that helped you. Yeah. What, uh, what, what did you, what did you think of that? Cause I, th I like, I like to talk about the, the ranger stations. I think, I think that, you know, when you go to like a park like Yellowstone, they're all over, mm -hmm. um, you can get into them and there's a lot to do. I, that Zion one's interesting cause they do kind of have the small museum attached to it. Right. I'm just curious, you guys' feedback for that, you know, your experience. Yeah. So it was pretty cool actually walking in there and seeing the museum. Cause for the most part, you know, I've been, been up to Canada and done some national parks up there. They don't really have that. Glacier doesn't have that. Uh, Yellowstone, as you've mentioned, doesn't have that. You go down there and that's just kind of, it's just kind of neat. You know, you can learn a little bit before you go into the park, go exploring. And then when you're in there, you can actually say like, Hey, this is from that, or this is here, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but other than that, as, as far as like the hospitality goes, <laughs> they were, yeah, they were all very, very helpful actually you know most of them if you had a question you could ask them and they would point you in the right direction obviously it's their job but you could tell that those people actually enjoyed their jobs you know a lot of yeah. times you get those people that especially with the amount of people that roll through there the employees are i would imagine they can get kind of um you know just on edge sometimes <laughs> and none of them seemed that way when we rolled through there you know, they were all super helpful, super, super happy to just kind of say, even if it was a stupid question, like, where's the bathroom? Oh, yeah, here, it's over here. And some of them, you know, they might walk you through to the bathroom. But, yeah, so I was pretty pleased with that stuff. And for the most part, everyone around there was very nice. Um, like, so when I, when I caught the bus ride back, uh, I was, like, just sitting there waiting, waiting to be picked up, actually, at the... Um, at the, the station, the ranger station. And um, yeah, they, they'll kind of sit and chat with you a little bit. You know, those folks are leaving, they're going home for the night or whatever, but they'll stop and chat with you. Like, hey, how was your day? Where'd you do? Or Where, where'd you go today? You know, all that stuff. How long are you staying? You know, which just, to me, it's more of a genuine experience. Yeah. I think they, the, the rangers definitely do add to it. You know, if they just kind of wander around acting like, you know, like they're better than you, it puts a bad taste in your mouth. No, I yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So, I love me a good ranger. Uh, they're yeah, that's awesome. right. There's some of the best parts of the park. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, right, I, and they add to it. <laughs> exactly. No, I think it just Zion just has that one one visitor center there, right there, kind of in the main. Mm -hmm. you know, hub. That's as far as I remember too. I know when we went out the east side, all it is is just you know an entrance. Yeah. It's not, there's the building to take your ticket or whatever there, or, you know, whatever you got. Um, but the West side is where the visitor center is and your information centers and all that stuff. And It's right by the city there, the little town, the uh, establishment. Yeah. I believe, I believe that's exactly what it's called. Cause we stayed at the hotel when I went there with, uh, we came or come back from Lake Havasu. Spring break. Oh. We, we stayed the night there. Uh, we all chip in for a hotel room, and it was it was actually pretty nice, you know, going into the yeah. park, and being able to, to tour it. And we did, you know, the easy stuff, the walking hike type stuff that the park had, yeah. walking by the river, um, up to like that, like where it's like carved into the wall, you know, the yeah, you know, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, it just it was interesting. Um, but you know, Utah, Utah. <sighs> I, like the thing about the desert to me is it's so different and, from each other in its own way that it's similar. Like, it's like, well, it's just different rocks, mm -hmm. you know, when you go to like Bryce or Zion sometimes. Um, so, so the drive to go back for me isn't too high personally to go like to back to Zion. Cause I'm like, well, I want to go to an Acadia. I want to mm -hmm. go to like a foreign country <laughs> beyond a Zion. Right. Yeah. Um, but, but I also do want to be like, no, I want to go back and do Angels Landing again because it was one of those experiences that you're just like, wow, this is great. Right. You know? Yeah. No, and it does. It's, uh, I don't know. I'm not necessarily a desert guy myself. I prefer, you know, the four seasons. I like the mountains. I like the snow. Um, but going down there, 
it definitely just kind of, I don't know, you see a lot of different stuff. You know what I mean? It's just kind of yeah. like, holy smokes. And you, you know, then when you go into like Springdale or something like that, or just meet people around the other towns, not necessarily in the park, you meet the locals and see how their way of life is, you know? I mean, it's not too much different, but they're the people that say, yeah, I don't like the snow. I don't want to deal with the snow, even though I think they do get snow in Zion. But Yeah, you know, I get what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's not the as benefit of living there, yeah. What, uh, did you go into Springdale or those... Those yeah. little towns. Yeah, yeah, even in the Springdale, they got a bunch of little gift shops and stuff like that. They had a, they had a little coffee house there that we went into as well. And that was, yeah, that was pretty good. I mean, I'm not much of a coffee drinker, but, you know, I mean, everyone was nice there and all that stuff. The crappy part, there was, you know, road construction going through there at that point. So that kind of added to people's stress levels and drivers' yeah. stress, stress levels. So that yeah. wasn't too fun. But other than that, folks really nice um and the little gift shops and everything like that you know you can find some neat stuff yeah it was like yeah so i mean it's just a typical gift shop but sometimes you like bring them back souvenirs i guess now people like that now they gotta love a good gift shop you know gotta get your christmas gifts from the <laughs> that's shop. right yeah no we uh we hit that little brewery that zion brewery literally right on the edge of the park um mm -hmm. That was great because we did that this day after we, right after we did Angels Landing, we came down, we sat there and had a beer and just looked over the park and we're like, all right, on to Bryce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I we were moving we a lot. We stopped that at that brewery too, actually, now that you mentioned that. Because I know yeah. we stopped at a little restaurant somewhere around there. I couldn't remember if it was in the park though, which now it makes sense. I don't think they'd have a restaurant in the park like that. But No, I think it's right there on the border though, right? Yeah, like I think right. parking lot thing. Yeah. Uh, no, that's good. Um, and then on the other, that east side where that entrance, there's just that gas station with like a subway and it. it's kind of a interesting uh, gift shop as well. Uh, yeah. Like kind of gift shops. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Wanderers, for checking us out. Uh, make sure that you are hitting that like button, that subscribe button, leaving us a review on the iTunes, on the Spotify's, or wherever that you are checking out this podcast today. Uh, we really appreciate it. Any kind of feedback, uh, we love it. Uh, make sure to check out the YouTube so you can see our uh, beautiful faces instead of just listening to those beautiful voices. But uh, hit the like and subscribe button there, too, to see all of the fun Wandering Way stuff. Yeah, on the YouTube too, make sure to check out those videos like Mark's amazing 30-day road trip where he lived out of the back of a Jeep. And if you want to commemorate it, go ahead and pick yourself up that Wandering Way swag in the Linktree bio, click the swag button. If you're just on YouTube or Google or some sort of thing, go teespring.com slash Wandering Ways. You'll find us. You'll find socks. You'll find shirts. You'll find whatever you want to put our logo on and you can have it for sure. And maybe you only like one of the Wandering Ways team members here and you want to check out maybe just me personally because obviously I might be the better one. Uh, check me out, Reverend Marcus on the Instagram, on the Twitter. I got some fun stuff there. Hey, and you might be into Jeeps. You could check out my Jeep, the Rougarou. You might be into adventures. Check out Zach of Wandering Ways. Who knows? You can find it all with us at Wandering Ways, the nature podcast. Yeah, let's keep wandering on. So um, it is time for probably one of my favorite segments of our podcast that we have, Colton, and it's called Cool Shit in Nature. And so I've lined up, so I have two videos today of some really cool shit in nature. Um, this first one, I thought of both you and Zach, actually, when I was looking at this one, when I saw it, because I feel like you guys may have experienced something like this before. <laughs> oh wow so for people just listening and it's a a big black bear that opens a door with its mouth yeah <laughs> right on the knob and, and my first that. thought when i saw this is like that's not his first time like he's he's gone into this house before he knows what he's doing yeah 
I, well, you lived in Columbus, and Columbus is it's 30 miles outside of Billings. It's it's in the hills. Uh you guys had bears and stuff, right? We did, yeah. Um we had let's see, over the let's see, I lived there for about 15 years. And over those years, I think we had about three bears there. Um two of them were just kind of they just wandered through the property because we grew up on some property over there, actually. And then uh one of them was just a little yearling and we actually had to call the game warden to come out there and, you know, remove him, trap him and relocate him basically. Um, Cause he was actually, he was messing. We had some livestock at that point and he was wet messing with our livestock. Now under Montana law, that gives you grounds to actually kill that animal. And we're like, you know what? No, he's young. He doesn't need to die yet. You know? Um, so I called up the game warden. He'd come out and uh set the big trap and everything like that and funny enough he said the best bait to use for a black bear because they're very curious animals and they like (laughs) they like bad smells but uh he said dog food and if you take a propane bottle and actually if you can get it to open up and spray a little bit you know that you know when propane starts running out you get that fume that just that smell from it yeah if you can kind of douse your dog food in that you'll get a bear every single time. <laughs> I'm not kidding you either. These, these are the words of a game warden himself. So we're, we're just kind of like, dude, you're crazy, but we'll do it. So right? we tried it and, you know, sure as shit, we, <laughs> we had a bear in our trap the next morning. All the <laughs> all the photographers and stuff, we were trying to get black bears, like, oh, dog food, propane, okay? <laughs> Dang, that's kind of wild. That is an odd combo for sure. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't think it, but I guess that's just something that it's that propane just kind of gets to them. And the dog food is just, I'm assuming, the more of a food smell. I, I don't exactly know why it has to be combined like that, but, you know. Yeah. Interesting. So that is that one. Yeah, it is. But we had a black bear at our cabin in Chama. Me, Sarah, and my dad were, there was a little pond there. And we were walking back from fishing and the black bear was fall. It followed us back like, all the way to the cabin. It was like a good, like 200 yards behind us the whole time. Yeah. Oh, the sketch. <laughs> that's what they're very curious. animal. I think of them as a big raccoon, you know? Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. a really good way to look at them. Yeah. They just, they're, they're very curious. I mean, don't, don't take their curiosity as kindness, yeah. <laughs> you know, because they still are bears and they still will eat. <laughs> but they uh um like what it was the bozeman high school they had a black bear get in the school um and there's been numerous cases when i lived in missoula we uh they'd always come down and get in our dumpster and so they'd actually a lot of times they'd they'd look through your windows and stuff like that and it's solely out of curiosity it's not because you know they're trying to get in your house which well in this case this bear is but you know (laughs) they uh they're just looking to see what's up you know yeah exactly yeah all righty so the other cool shit in nature this one i thought was really cool um but for anybody that is just watching it is i think a leopard sneaking up on uh i'm I'm not a gazelle i'm not actually sure what it's sneaking up on impala is it is it a impala an impala i i think it's an impala i can't it's kind of a distant view but i'm pretty sure yeah yeah, it's it's a little far to see from the video, but it's on yeah. the cat. It's the similar to like an American, like a like a pronghorn, like a yeah. antelope. It's the crazy cotton. how close this guy gets. He's hiding behind a tree. Well, because I wonder if they're like deer, right? Like deer, if you walk like to a mule deer straight on with it, it can't judge your distance. But yeah. when you're walking sideways on it, it can. Oh, get it! Get it! Get it! Oh, it got it! <laughs> Dang. Another classic takedown. (laughs) (laughs) Mark shows a lot of animals getting attacked. That's cool, though. That Well, but see, I think it's so easy for people. It is. I think it is. It's so easy for people to just form this opinion that nature is uh, nurturing, so to speak. Yeah. We don't. It's it's so easy for us to forget that every single day those animals are out there fighting for their lives. I mean, they exactly. are on the run constantly, whether you're chasing something or you're being chased by something. You know, 
I agree because it is like a survival tactic and I think we you know especially through like Grandpa Gray growing up how he taught our dads and like yeah. how he was taught right just through the generations of like surviving in the outdoors being understanding how to be good outdoorsmen etc mm -hmm. right like that's kind of in our blood and in our root and I, I I look at that and then I look at other people sometimes and it's like you take those six deaths in Zion and it's like you know that is the Darwinism, like Californian, but then you do hear the stories that it is the experts, right? Right. Um, but it, it, it's a fine line, and I think you got you just got to be smart about it, you know. No matter what you do, society you're 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 the Impala, you're the Gazelle, you're the whatever. Yeah. You know? Right. Have oh, you, that's right. Colton? Have you ever seen? It's like an Instagram called Nature Is Metal. Dude, I love that. Yeah, I, I was gonna I, say I like that's it. right up your alley. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. But he, the whoever runs that, which kudos to him because he does a damn good job. But he just puts things into perspective for people, and I like mm -hmm. his captions. They're not short. His captions are pretty long, fairly lengthy, and he will say, you know, I know this might be controversial, but this is how it is. Sorry. We can't change that. That's that's not on us. You know, you get these people like going into like Yellowstone or something thinking it's a petting zoo. That ain't no petting zoo, man. <laughs> you know, that that is I mean, animals, that's just their sanctuary. That's where they are. They know they're safe there because there's hunters and stuff like that, you know, and not to mention animals aren't there, dumb. there's habitat there. But they're not dumb. Like that's no. that's the problem with humans, right? We 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 mistake animals for being dumb, but really what it is is we advanced with technology. We were able to advance far enough to where we just dominate them and can kill them and contain them to these areas. Yeah. Because like we're not we're not living with them anymore. Right. Like, we used to do that, and that's natural. Or we yeah. think of them as like the cow or pig or sheep at the county fair, where they're all like you know, you can just go up to it. Yeah, you can go and pet it, and it's not going to do anything. Or the owner is going to come out and stop it from doing anything. But arguably, well, I don't know. Bigfoot or Smokey the Bear might come out and stop, put a stop to it. <laughs> yeah, Smokey but I would argue that we're about that. <laughs> we are managing them. Right. You know, we're they're not as wild as they are. You know, we have organizations that tag them and track them and know how many of them are out there. Like, yeah, they're not even truly wild. No, and that's. For anyone out there that is curious kind of on that part, um, there's this book called Satellites in the Sky. And it is mainly about, Zach, what you just mentioned, but there is no more, what's the difference between wild and wilderness? We created a wilderness, and that's where these animals now live. Wild is something that has never seen a human before. So if you go out hiking in some very remote area, the, the place that I would use for reference is um, like the Bob Marshall in Montana. Most of my exploring has been in Montana. So, but the Bob Marshall, you might walk back there and you can go a ways back there. You have to go horseback and stuff like that. You're not even allowed to take a mountain bike back there. Um, but if you get back there far enough, you might run into an animal that has never seen a human being in its lifetime. And they have no idea what you are. And that is the most wild that you will ever get in your life. You know what I mean? Because even, but even when you're out there, satellites in the sky like the book you know like the title you look up and we're exploring still it is there's nothing that's been untouched at this point it's yeah i i was listening to a guy talk about like our definition of natural right you go to a park and they claim it to be all this natural environment but there's mm -hmm. a road through the park and it's right. not like the right. road was natural right so it's just it was testing this definition of what we call natural and it was a good point you know right like we have touched so much and it's like thank god we can preserve at least a tiny bit <laughs> mm, we need to preserve more <laughs> but that's but. true too <laughs> no i because it's weird because even like you think about that wilderness right there's still roads highways and interstates around those wilderness areas you know they're 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 boxing i always I get that way when I'm in Oregon, you know, you go to these like yes. parks, especially within the Willamette Valley, these state parks, these state refugees for wildlife, you know, and it's like, but I'm surrounded by a city, you know, I, mm -hmm. I drive through the fields here at Billings, just, there's a lot of geese right now, this time, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're migrating and 
you know, the, even in the like 15 years I've lived here in Billings, the, there's no, the, the, the flocks, they're getting smaller. They're getting smaller. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. crazy how this, this wilderness is, it's becoming like a, a management, like, you know, you look at like New York, right? Like the, the trees and like the part central park and then all the little shit they have. And that's it. You know, there's a little bit of wilderness within this concrete world. And, mm-hmm. you know, I said it once before, we're, we're this disease on this planet you know we're creating the concrete which is black and blue and not good for the earth you know <laughs> the earth is supposed to be green healthy yeah. and vibrant oh we're we're a mold we're just slowly taking it over and all of a sudden it's going to be con- consumed and we're going to be like well what the hell do we do it's like well we've had <laughs> we've get had plenty of warning signs get with your satellites up in space that's what that's what we're doing <laughs> i actually just saw go. a thing where the volcano that erupted in Tonga a um, couple, I think it was like a week or two ago, how yeah. the like particulates from the explosion got up in the stratosphere and that could like halt human caused climate change for like a year. <laughs> like it put, a, it put, it gave us a year, an extra year or two, maybe <laughs> like to figure shit out. <laughs> right. Well, the, the shitty part is a lot of people don't see that as, they just see that as a grace period. So they're like, oh, we're going to procrastinate for that year. You know? Yeah. And it's like, what the hell, man? We, <laughs> we, got, we had to do this stuff yesterday. But yeah. a lot of people just don't see it that way. You know, it's just yeah. kind of, it's so easy to get wrapped up in your own little world that we completely forget about the world that's around us and the world that we kind of grew up in. And it's changed even, I mean, I know we're all similar in age and shit, since I was a kid, it's changed a lot, you know. For sure. And, and it, we're not that old. Like that's the that's the scary thing, you know. It's yeah. it's going hunting and not seeing the same amount of deer as you once saw. Mm-hmm. Uh going to these these places that you know you called you know wild. They're not mm-hmm. wild anymore. Some no. of them. No, a lot of they're just they're they're touched, you know, by humans. And as much as we claim we don't, we do alter the landscape. You know, even just throwing up a house out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, that's the deer, the elk, the whatever's out there. They recognize that stuff. You know, it's, it's, well, it's just like the Yellowstone thing. People think like, oh, that's nature and everything. And these elk, that's they're they're pushed there and they're preserving their whatever. No, they're doing that. On, they're doing that on their own because they realize there's a lot more pressure outside of that park. There's a lot more stuff going on out there. And yeah. they don't like that. No, hundred exactly. percent crazy Mm -hmm. because take the wolves for example Mm. like they're they were a prairie animal they're in the mountains elk are the same way you know Mm -hmm. elk are the same way but now that's that's obviously where they're going to colonize so to speak is you know on the flatlands because it's easier to build now that's pushing everything that was previously there into the hills out of their historical habitat out of their ancestral home you know, and they, they have to adapt. And but what's scary is doesn't we're, happen that fast. What we're starting to build in the hills. We're starting mm-hmm. to, to yes. really- people are gonna go where uh, people can find space to get there. That's right. That's that's the one thing that's not being made is dirt. Yep. Well, well there's never if it, unless you count that volcano in Tonga. Technically, that was making some right. more land. I guess um, that counts, ocean yeah, water. We're, we're if we're getting back. technical <laughs> with it, though. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, we got to wander on back to Zion National Park because um, that is the main reason we're here. Just kind <laughs> of like if you were to go back to Zion, what would be like the one thing you got to do if, if you went back to Zion? I would do the Narrows. <laughs> that's that was what i wanted to do when i was down there that's what i didn't get to do um that's not necessarily a regret of mine just cause it just didn't happen didn't plan out but i would like to go there and maybe it would be one of those trips where i go for a day or for two and go the narrows and then maybe another hike i'd like to do angels landing again um especially with the permit thing now in place that would be great uh because you know the people i'm not a huge people person in the first place and when i'm in a national park I perceive it as nature. And when I'm in nature, I don't want to be around a bunch of people. No. And no permit system kind of forces you to be around a lot of people. 
Yeah, that uh, that is very true. It, I'm interested to see how the permit system works. Um, I'm hoping mm-hmm. that it makes it a much, much safer hike to do. I think it will. I mean, <laughs> I'm not a park ranger by any means, but I think it will, just judging by how many people were up there at that point yeah. and hearing about the death, you know, the days prior. And, you know, the little girl that fell at, at the beginning, I mean, that – I, I don't want to say she was pushed or anything, but I'm sure she was flustered by a lot of people around her. And obviously the dad, you know, that's his instinct. He's going to go after her. And it's just a shame that it had to happen that way, you know? No, exactly. It's like uh, the Grand Canyon, the Yellowstone, you hear the kind of same, similar stories. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. All the time. Uh, it's, it's nuts. It's, it's, it's a park, right? And, 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 and I think people treat it like a park, you know, like I'm going. They to do. Home. Mm-hmm. And it's not that you, 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 you have to treat these places like the decisions you make are, could be the last because, you know, think of like me and Mark, we went to Hawaii and we're climbing up on this mountain. Yeah. We're surrounded by cities all around us, but we're up here and we make the wrong move, the wrong decision. We fall, we break a leg or something. It's a mm-hmm. lot harder to, I mean, it'll be e- easy rescue with a helicopter or something there, but <laughs> yeah it's it's hard you know you got you can get a helicopter well yeah (laughs) but no it's it it is something that i think people tend to forget is that nature is unforgiving i mean it's it's simple i go hunting quite a lot actually by myself and you better believe i have a lot of like safety stuff in my pack with me do i use it all the time no i have stuff that i haven't used in years but i have it for that purpose i mean what happens if i do you know it's snowy out in montana and i'm out hunting and i slip into a hole or something break my ankle i ain't crawling down that mountain i'll tell you that much you know so i gotta i gotta somehow figure out how to patch my ankle up and well probably not walking i probably would crawl down the mountain but i'm not that tough (laughs) but uh, you know it uh you got to prepare for that stuff and when you're in a national park a lot of people don't you know you see a lot of people in these um you know, just fancy cars, they come in and they just do think they're, they're just there for pictures, which is fine and dandy. You know, that's great. But you do have to understand that the closer you get to the edge, the closer you are to death or injury. And you have yeah. to be able to get out of that situation. 100%. So I got to be that guy. We're getting to the end of our time here. Um, so at the end, we do final words, which is literally anything you want to say. If you had a poem, you could read a poem. If you had a video, you can show a video. It's anything you want. And since you are our guest today, Colton, you can have the first final words. So final words, my guy. All right. Don't litter because I'm the one that has to pick it up. <laughs> you need to get in touch with the Hoodsy the Owl. Give a hoot, don't pollute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's, he's going to be my buddy. <laughs> All righty, yeah. final words, Zach. No, guys, thank you so much uh, for another great week. Colton, thank you for coming on. Uh, we appreciate yes, having you on. We appreciate you know, our wanders learning about Zion and their experiences. You know, it is one of those smaller parks. Uh, so it's good for when you're jumping around Utah, going to the Big Five or Grand Canyon or Lake Powell or wherever you may find yourself at in the, in the southeast and or southwest, sorry, uh, south. <laughs> you're throwing it off. Other but, side. <laughs> exactly. It's good. It's good. It's Utah. I want to get down there. I want to go down to Moab. Um, so maybe I could hit Zion on my way down, but you know, life's short, you know, rather than talk about it, go do it. You know, me and Colton were out ice fishing yesterday. We we're doing it next weekend. I think I'm going to go ice fishing again. So just get out in nature, force yourself to do it because the more and more you force yourself to do these things, the more and more they become a pattern and a habit, and then you're doing what you love. So just keep wandering on and you know, Reverend, on to you. Hey, man, love it, 100%. Uh, Reverend's final words of wisdom. Uh, thank you so much for coming on today, Colton. It was a blast. I'd love talking to you. I'd love all things Zion and all the extra wandering that we did today. Um, stay beautiful, everybody. Cannot tell you how much I appreciate every single one of the wanderers that listen. Um, yeah, just go out, do it. Um, especially if you can get down to Zion, there's a lot of cool shit. So, and if you do go to Zion, it could, it's a high, it's a place you can do two, three hikes in a day and you can see a lot of it very quickly. Um, but that being said, peace out everybody.
Bye.